In this video, I'm going to go through how I would create a microservice using the RESTful API for manipulating a hash map. So to begin, I need to have some libraries in place here. I imported this logback classic to handle the logging as well as the Spark Java template for time leaf. And what that will do is that will also import the dependencies to include the JD server. The JD server is going to be our web server to handle any HTTP requests. And Spark Java is going to handle the actual processing of the requests. So Spark Java is actually a library that you can use to define uh, routes, which are easy way of handling HTTP requests. So let me show you that now. In this project, we're going to create a uh, RESTful API. And in order to do that, we probably need to understand what a RESTful API actually do, right? So in the RESTful API specifications, it specifies manipulation of resources using different HTTP methods. There are a few common HTTP methods that are used to manipulate resources. One of those uh, methods is get. The other one is post. You also have put and then you have delete. In the get request, you return the data. In the post, you update the data. And in the put, you replace the data and delete you delete the data, right? So this is actually pretty intuitive. Okay. And in order for us to actually create this RESTful API, we have to define resources, which are mapped by the URLs. The way that we do that is basically we're using Spark and Spark has methods to handle different HTTP request types. So one of them is get, you have delete, you have post, and you have put, right? So those are the four common ones that we will need to handle whenever we implement any RESTful API. So let's start by handling the uh, get method. In this project, we want to expose a hash map as a web service. So in order for us to do that, we need to have a data structure. So in this case, I'm gonna just create a hash map, which has a key and value of string types. So I just wanna call this data map. And in this case, since I'm using a hash map, I wanna expose a hash map, the most logical way to do it is basically to create the slash map, which is going to be a prefix that says this is going to manipulate my hash map and then followed by an ID. So this is going to be my route. And then I'm going to say the key is. Okay. So what this line is doing is going to access the actual value for this variable. And when we define a route using spark, we can actually parameterize certain keywords, certain parts of the path by just using this colon. So basically what this says is whatever values here, store this in this variable called ID. And the way that we retrieve that value is basically call this params on the request followed by that key, right? So this key can be anything. I mean, we can say X, Y, Z, as long as these keys match. So that will basically return the value of the key. The way that we're going to access this key is by using curl. So then you know, we can say curl and then a, a URL and then map and then a key. So this key could be like uh, first name. So th this value first name will be stored in this variable called XYZ. And then the way that we retrieve that variable is basically called this params method on the request. And then that'll basically give us the value of the key. And what we want to do is we just we want to return this, uh, the value identified by that key. So before we run this, since we only have a get method that will return data from the data map, we don't have any data in the map to test with. So let's as some dummy data. So I just created two entries, first name and last name, and initialized those values to be John and Smith. Okay, so then now if we start our server, the server is gonna be running on port 4567. And then that's why in the curl, we specify this 4567 as a port and localhost is gonna be the machine that we're running on. And what this is doing, it's going to issue a get request to this URI slash map slash first name. And then that will basically map to this route and it's going to be handled by this piece of code. And so let's go ahead and do that. So you can see that it actually returned the value for this key first name, which is Smith. And I can do the same thing for last name. Okay. So when we access this last name, it actually returned and not found. And the reason for that is because uh, whenever we return null from this route, it actually defaults it to a 404 not found. And right? so the way that we address that is basically to just append this new line to it. So then if we restart it, 
you can see that it actually returns null. The reason why this doesn't have a last name is because we didn't initialize this to be last name. We said first name. Right, so let's say if we restart it. Okay, you can see that it actually returns Smith and the first name. It's going to be John. So now we have this get method working. So now let's move on to uh, implementing the post method. So the post method is supposed to update the data. So we want to copy this get method and simply just change the this to be a post and keep everything else the same. And then instead of retrieving the data from the data map, we want to update the data map with some value. But the thing is. We haven't defined how to pass the value into this request. So the way that I'm going to do that is basically by using this query params method that is mapped to this name, a variable called V. The way that we pass data into this route using curl is using this with the minus D. Right? So minus D is actually a uh, option for curl and that will basically issue a post method to this URL. The way that we update the value is basically saying v equals let's change it to my name jim okay what we're expecting is that when we call this method it's going to call this post with the key first name and then the value is going to be from the query parameters the query string actually and then uh, the way that we define the query string is basically say the name equals value in this case it would v equals jim because we actually have this uh, name called v the variable name called v so let's execute that and then you can see that it actually uh, returns Jim. So this is doing what we expected. So if we want to just query what's the first name, right, it's Jim. And then the last name, again, this should be Smith since we didn't update it. So up until this point, it would be nice if we can actually just see the full value of the map. So we want to dump the map. The way that we can do that is basically by defining a resource route to just go to the map itself and what we can do is we can actually just return this data map and then new line right like so right so now if we restart since we restart it's going to reset the map to the default values so when we actually call curl on this map by itself without the key it's basically going to call this route rather than this route and then you can see that it actually print out the contents of the map so we can actually also like add values to the map. So let's say if I want to add an address, I can do so by specifying the minus D and then say V equals, uh, okay. And then I can then query the map and you can see that right now we actually have three values, right? First name, last name, and then the address, the one that we just created before. And then you can also update. So let's say if I want to update the address, you can see that here so the value do change right so this is basically how we're going to create a, our rest api to update and retrieve data in the map and then now we just have to be able to delete the data from the map and the way that we do that is to i'm going to copy this get uh, as a starting point and then in this case we want to return the data that we remove from the key okay so with this we want to change this get to delete and then what this delete should do is basically remove the value identified by this key from this data map and then when we do that i think remove will return the previous value that was stored in the data map so that let's give that a go okay so if we want to look at the contents of the map we can use this slash map and then now if we want to delete an element the first thing we need to do is be able to address the element by using the key so let's say we want to delete the first name and then the way that we issue a delete command from curl is basically by using this minus capital x uh, option and this will allow you to pass the HTT method that you want to use so in this case we want to say delete so we want to delete this first name and then it will return the previous value before it is deleted and then you can see that if we look at the full map, we actually already deleted the first name, All right? So that's how we're going to delete elements from that map. Now, what if we really want to clear out the whole map? And the way that we do that is basically to replace the map. Since uh, there's no point in replacing a value because you can actually just post and put a value, which has a similar effect. But then 
if we want to clear the map, we can actually call put on the map itself. And that basically will indicate that we actually want to clear out the whole map. So the way that we do that is by using this put on the map, right? So we're not going to have any uh, parameters. So in this case, we just want to clear the map. And then we just want to return the contents of that map, which should be empty at this point. So let's restart. So right now, since we restarted, we have the default data, which is going to be the first name and last name, John and Smith. Now, if we want to clear out the whole map, we can use this minus X and then say put. So what we're doing is we're going to call the put method on this slash map, which is handled by this route right here. This route will basically clear the map and then return the contents of the map, which should be just empty. So you can see that it actually did what we intended. And then if we want, you know, just query the map. Okay. So. Right now we're actually using curl, but you can actually use a web browser to actually access this data. So let's say we want to go to Chrome and then we just type in this URL. You can see the return of that content. So now if we actually use curl to add data, so let's say we want to um, add our first name back. Okay. And then now we refresh this. You can see that it actually shows you the first name. So let's go ahead and add our last name as well. So, okay, so this is John Hood, right? So here, so first name is John, last name is Hood. And then if you really just need to access the actual element, you can just reference that by specifying the key here. It's the second part of the uh, URL. And then from there, it basically returns the actual value for this key. And normally in using the web browser, you cannot call put or delete. That's something that you have to do programmatically using something like jQuery or Ajax. Okay, so that is how I would implement a RESTful microservice using the Jetty server. To recap, a RESTful API has a couple of methods that perform specific operations on your data. So get is going to be uh, used to retrieve the data, post to update, put is to replace, and delete is to delete the data. Right? And the way that you can handle these types of operations is by creating routes using different methods that are defined in Spark. So one of them is get. So get is basically to handle this get method. P you have put, you also have post, and you have delete. And each of those methods takes a route, which is also maps to the URL that you are passing in the call. So let's say you have the slash map slash last name, and then that will basically be handled by one of these routes depending on how the Spark engine matches the URL to the routes. And you can actually have variables in the routes. So you can actually tell Spark to map certain keywords to variables. And you can access those by using the params method on the request to retrieve the values for those variables. Okay, so that is basically how I would create a RESTful API microservice using the Jetty server. All right, so if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you like this channel, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.